name is Nakia Ellis and I am a prevention educator here at the Domestic Violence Crisis Center. And with me tonight, I have my colleague Ann Rodwell Lawton. Um, she will be assisting in the chat today. So if you have any questions or ideas, um, feel free to put it in the chat and Ann um, will be monitoring that. So we'll make sure that all of your questions get answered. Um, so while people are still filtering in, I'm just going to start uh, the PowerPoint. Um, oh, let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, so uh, the first part of this series is called, Is Your Relationship Healthy? Understanding the Relationship Spectrum. So we are gonna be talking all about um, healthy and unhealthy relationships and really uh, break down the definition of what uh, domestic violence is. So um, like I said before, we are from the Domestic Violence Crisis Center and we offer free and confidential services for victims of domestic violence, uh, including a 24 seven uh, crisis intervention hotline that you can call or text um, to access. We also um, offer emergency safe housing, um, which are basically emergency shelters at undisclosed locations that victims of domestic violence can go to if they have no place else to stay. Um, we also offer a variety of different ad advocacy services, including um, legal services to help with restraining orders or legal clinics to help with child custody or divorce cases, as well as financial advocacy, um, where we can help with um, finding housing um, or help with employment or restoration of credit. Um, we also offer a very robust youth and adult prevention education program, which I am a proud um, member to be a part of. Um, so one of our programs tonight is this, this workshop that we are hosting through the Ferguson Library, um, as well as professional training programs. And we serve uh, the uh, the cities and towns of Stamford, Norwalk, Darien, New Canaan, Weston, Westport, and Wilton. So for more information, you can uh, follow us on our social media pages or visit our website, dvccct.org. So a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, as Eloise mentioned before, this, this uh, workshop is being recorded. Um, so just be mindful of that. Um, if there are any personal um, questions that you would like to ask and you're concerned about privacy, you can directly message Anne um, and she, we can get that answered for you um, without anyone else seeing. Um, I do want to uh, let you know that the stuff that we'll be talking about this evening um, is very sensitive and can be triggering for some people and be overwhelming. Um, so if you need to take a take a break, turn off your camera. Well, the camera's not on today, so we are thankful for that. But if you need to step away for a moment, um, feel free to do that. We just wanna make sure that first and foremost, you are taken care of. Um, so this is judgment-free zone, do what you have to do. Um, uh, some other housekeeping things, I just wanna bring to your attention the chat feature at the bottom of your screen, it's a little message bubble. Um, again, if you have any questions um, or ideas, um, please place it in the chat. Um, we, we, like I said, Anne is monitoring that, so we'll make sure that your, that your ideas get heard. So we want, really want this to be interactive. Um, so I'm going to be asking for a lot of participant um, participation today. Um, so I will ask the question and you can either raise your hand. There's a reaction feature so you can raise your hand and Anne can unmute you and you can say what you want to say or you can put it um, in the chat. Okay. So um, to, I think those are all the housekeeping things. So we are going to dive into um, our first activity. And my question to um, all of you tonight are, what are some qualities that you value in a relationship? So I'm going to stop sh sharing the PowerPoint for one second and I'm going to um, bring up our whiteboard feature. Um, but again, you can put it in the chat, and you can write your response or you can, um, un we can unmute you and you can tell us, but what are some things, what are some qualities that you value in a relationship? You can also think uh, 
frame it as what are some things that make a relationship strong or healthy? So either or works. If you want to unmute yourself, just raise your hand and we or do the chat. And Nakia is pulling up the whiteboard feature because she is going to write all of our answers and we'll brainstorm together. Okay, so right off the bat, I can't see the chats, but I, I got chat. open, I heard commu I saw communication. Yeah, so um, Brenda, thank you. She wrote trust and communication. Great. And now, Brenda, can you kind of tell us a little bit more about uh, why you wrote trust and communication? Why would that be important for a healthy relationship? So another person, thank you, Sarah, wrote communication. So another person saying that that is important. Um, okay, we'll wait for Brenda to expand on that communication piece. Nakia, we also have two people who said respect and loyalty. Okay. And we also have someone who put honesty in here too. If anyone wants to expand on any of those things, why it's important, what it might look like, you can do that as well. I like how we have two people back to back who wrote respect and loyalty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Brenda wrote trusting communication to be able to share thoughts and feelings comfortably. Yeah, so when we trust someone, we feel like they have our best interest at heart so we can communicate more openly with them. Thanks, Brenda. And I also love that you um, wrote comfortable. I think it's really important that you are comfortable in your relationship, um, that you don't feel like you have to um, hide certain parts of yourself or, or be afraid um, of your partner's reaction. So I definitely think um, being comfortable in relation, uh, being comfortable is a healthy quality as well. Great. I see some more chat, the chats lighting up. What else is it saying? Yeah, Natalie wrote, respect is being honest with the person and that allows for more communication. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more, Natalie. Um, definitely if you respect someone, you are going to be honest with them and, and you are honest through your communication. Um, another thing that I another thing that I think goes hand in hand with honesty is trust. Um, I think that's how you build trust, right? Is through being honest with your partner. And um, you can't really trust someone if they aren't being honest. So I think respect and honesty go in hand as well as trust and honesty. Um, I hope I'm saying this right, Ada uh, said respect because there are times when people can become vulnerable and respect is essential in a healthy communication. Absolutely. Yeah, and I also like that you mentioned that um, people are vulnerable in a relationship. I think that is important, an important aspect that builds the trust in a relationship if, you, if both people can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Natalie um, talked about loyalty. Thank you, Natalie. Because I was going to ask someone to expand on that. That's a, bit, that's a big one that we want to talk about. So Natalie wrote, uh, Nakia, loyalty. You want to be with someone who wants to be with only you. You want to talk about that? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So you said that you want to be with someone that is only with you. Absolutely. If you are setting that boundary in your relationship that you are going to be exclusive with each other um, and you are only going to talk to you, like you and your partner are only going to talk to each other in a romantic way, that absolutely would be um, healthy for your relationship. Um, because you are putting that boundary in place and you are both mutually agreeing to respect that boundary. Um, but could anybody, I'm going to put the question back in, back on the group, um, but can anyone tell me how loyalty could potentially be unhealthy in relationship? Like, think about like, what are some actions that people do sometimes um, when they say that they're doing it because they're loyal or, you know, I or they're acting out of loyalty. How could that potentially be unhealthy? While we wait for that loyalty um, conversation to come in, Sarah also mentioned boundaries, just as you mentioned that word. So adding that to our list, thanks Sarah. Boundaries are really important in respecting those boundaries. Um, someone asked, can you repeat the question? Oh, so the question I asked is, uh, we, so we said that loyalty could definitely be healthy if we we're talking about setting that boundary that both partners are going to be exclusive to each other in that relationship. Um, but can anyone think of an example of where loyalty could potentially be unhealthy in a relationship? Like how could someone act out of loyalty that would be unhealthy? 
Yeah, so a few people um, responded. The person can get obsessive. You can put your partner over everything or everyone else. And one more to add, someone said, loyalty can be unhealthy because you could end up having a partner that thinks loyalty means that you don't talk to anyone. It makes you cut off friends and family. Absolutely, right? So if loyalty leads to isolation where you pri are prioritizing your partner over everyone else and they are controlling who you can talk to um, just because they don't want to get jealous and they say, you know, I'm number one in your life and, and you need to be loyal to me, that could potentially be very unhealthy for the relationship. So, um, but I love that someone brought up loyalty because um, later in the presentation, we're going to talk about how relationships fall on a spectrum. So in some um, examples, loyalty is absolutely healthy if we're talking about setting that healthy boundary. Um, but in other in another context, loyalty can potentially be very unhealthy and abusive for the relationship. I love this discussion already. Um, do we have any other um, qualities that we want to add to this list or any other um, ideas that we want to um, expand on? Um, I would like to add independent to me in a relationship mm -hmm. that is something that I value, that both people have their own independence. Absolutely. Um, and I especially think that um, in this day and age when you are like so interconnected with people, it's really easy to become dependent on that person. Um, but it's important to still maintain that independence even. And it doesn't mean that you don't love your partner. It just means that you love yourself too. And you love your time and you love the things that you love to do and you still are staying true to yourself. So absolutely independence is great. Okay, so there are no more ideas coming in the chat. I'm going to jump back into uh, the PowerPoint. And again, um, I love the chat. If someone feels more comfortable raising their hand and unmuting themselves, we can do that too, but use whatever works for you. Okay, let me hop back in. All right, so let's see. So we had communication and trust and honesty and respect that you already mentioned, which is fabulous. Another one that I wanna add is equality. Um, it's really important that um, in a relationship, both partners are equal, meaning that they both have equal input in the relationship of how they want how it wants how they want it to go equal um, decision making powers um, as well as equal input right you don't want someone that's like always giving and the other person is always taking like that's going to definitely cause an imbalance and it and that's going to be unhealthy so you want equality all the way around um, we also have support we have boundaries that we mentioned um, empathy and independence so i'm going to talk a little bit more um, we're going to start with Communication. So communication is going to be key to any healthy relationship, whether it's romantic um, or otherwise. And one tip that we like to give people is to use an I statement when you are communicating with your partner. Um, it's really easy that when you're getting frustrated, um, to, you know, to say, you know, you did this and that made me mad or you this or you that. But when you start a, a sentence with you, Oftentimes it may sound like an attack and naturally when someone is feeling like they are under attack, the first thing that they want to do is defend themselves and then that can kind of um, spiral out of control and it wouldn't be a very productive conversation. So instead of um, saying you, we like to use an I statement where you basically just express how you feel about the situation as well as give uh, your partner a solution so they can fix the situation. So for instance, if your partner is late for a date, you can say, you know, I feel annoyed when you're late for our date. I, I would like you to try to be on time next time, right? And that's a very simple way to just express how you're feeling. Um, and instead of saying you're so annoying when you're late, um, another uh, skill that we like to use in, in healthy communication is practice active listening. And by practicing after li active listening, that looks like actually looking at your partner, you know, giving them your full attention, not scrolling on your phone, whether having a conversation um, or doing other stuff. Um, it also helps if you repeat back what they say to you. So you can say, you know, I heard you say um, this was really frustrating. And then after that, after you repeat it back, you want to ask follow up questions. So you can say, you know, I heard you say that this was really frustrating to you. What would what would have been helpful in that situation? What could you have done instead that you would have liked, right? If you do that, your partner is going to know that you are um, invested into the conversation and also invested in helping them come up with a solution. 
Another key to um, healthy communication is apologizing and taking responsibility for your actions. Um, no one is perfect. We all mess up sometimes. And it's important that when we do, that we can, um, you know, say sorry. That that can solve a lot of problems. Um, and a well, red flag that we'll talk about later on is that if a partner isn't taking responsibility for their actions, but instead blaming you by saying, you know, I wouldn't have done this if you had did this, or I wouldn't have done that if you hadn't made me mad, right? That would be a red flag because they're not showing that they can take, that they're recognizing what they did wrong and then taking responsibility for that. So that's important to keep in mind. And finally, when you when discussions are getting heated, it's okay to take a break. You can, um, you know, say, you know, hey, this is getting, you know, um, too much. I just want to let's talk about this tomorrow, or I need to go take a walk, or I need to go take a drive. Um, that's absolutely okay to say. Um, it's not being immature. You're not being a coward. You're actually being really brave because you're allowing yourself the space um, to calm down and to compose your thoughts and to think of a safe and healthy way to communicate what you need to your partner. So we always um, advocate for people just taking a break so that so they can gather themselves. So that's um, communication. Another one that we've we talked about a little bit before, what are boundaries? And boundaries are just personal limits that you set with the other person to inform them of how you want to be treated. And there are all different types of boundaries, physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, sexual boundaries, digital boundaries, financial boundaries, time boundaries. I mean, the list goes on and on. But it's really important in life that you set these boundaries and you do that through communication, which was our previous slide, right? So some examples of boundaries that you can set um, for a financial boundary, you can say, you know, I don't mind paying for some of our dates, but I would appreciate if you shared the expenses too. How about I buy dinner and you buy tickets to the movies, right? That, you know, that very antiquated um, thought that, you know, guys have to pay for all, you know, for all the dates and all the expenses. It's not true. And you can definitely set that boundary with your partner. Um, another boundary I want to highlight is a time boundary. You can easily say, you know, I need some quiet time for myself this evening. Um, let's check in with each other tomorrow. Sometimes when we are having um, a really busy day, we just want to kind of zone out on Instagram and not talk to anyone. And your partner might, you know, feel some type of way because they see that you're active on social media, but you're not replying to your text. But you have every right to take that break just because you're on your phone doesn't mean that you have to be in communication with your partner. So I saw that the chat lit up. Yes. Yeah. So someone wrote, I think using the I statement is great. However, when people have unhealthy communication skills, it can be difficult to express what a person may feel. Absolutely. I do agree with you. And no one is going, communication is not something that just comes naturally to people. Um, it's definitely something that you have to practice and um, you know, be very militant about and just be conscious of it. So I definitely don't expect anyone to get it right, right off the bat. Um, I it just, it's going to take a lot of trial and error, but if you are committed to something like that, I definitely think that is possible. Mm -hmm. And I think also too, because we could view that comment in a few different ways. Uh, sometimes um, it might not be safe to feel like you can express yourself, right? So that's another part of it too, of being able to assess, is it safe for me to say this right now? Are there going to be repercussions? And I'm going to say if you're having that conversation in your head of, is it safe to express myself? Then uh, you should definitely connect with DVCC to kind of talk about that more because we should be able to express ourselves. Okay, one more, Nakia. Yeah. Someone said the last one is key with lots of exclamation points. Love it. She says, oh. we need that quiet time sometimes to find ourselves. Yes, we deserve our own time and our own independence. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. And I love that you linked it back to the independence. We always go back to those healthy qualities that we talk about in relationships and independence, not only for yourself, but for your partner is definitely going to be important. Um, so last note about boundaries is that they can change over time. So in the beginning of the relationship, maybe when things are still new, you may not feel too comfortable um, talking about certain things or doing certain things with your partner. And that's absolutely okay. You set those stricter boundaries. And then over time, as you trust your partner more, maybe those boundaries change and that's fine. All you have to do is have a conversation with your partner to communicate, communicate your needs. 
And the last one is empathy. Um, and empathy is just imagining yourself in your partner's shoes. And two things I want to highlight with empathy is what it sounds like. So a lot of times when a partner um, is telling you about their day or a frustrating situation, um, the first thing that we want to do is to um, offer a solution, to give them advice, right? To try to help them out, right? Because if we see someone that we love and care about in pain or hurting, we want to naturally help them. But sometimes that advice isn't really wanted um, in that moment. And a lot of times people just want to be feel, want to feel heard and validated. Um, so it's going to be important that when a partner is sharing with you, that you validate um, what they're saying, you validate their feelings, as well as show gratitude. You know, say thank you for sharing that with me. You know, that must be really tough. And only offer advice if they're saying like, hey, what would you do in this situation? Or, you know, can you help me with that, right? Because a lot of times people just want to be seen and recognized and heard and not necessarily in that moment um, to, to get that advice. So that's just important to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say with my partner personally, we have this thing where we're like, do you just want me to listen right now? Or do you want me to like help problem solve? Uh, to communicate like what kind of empathy we want in that moment, right? Because I think because it really is a turnoff and you're like, I just want you to listen. I don't want you to offer advice. So communicating that is important. Absolutely. Okay, so that was wonderful participation. Thank you all for your comments. Um, we're going to jump into our next interactive activity. So in just a moment, I'm going to launch a poll and it's just going to be um, an event that happens in a relationship and I want you to uh, tell me whether you think it is healthy or unhealthy. So I'm going to give you maybe 15, 20 seconds to answer it, and then we'll discuss your answer. So I'm going to launch the poll now, and I'll read it out loud. It says, Kyle um, and Sam get into an argument, and Kyle gives Sam the silent treatment for three days. Is that healthy or unhealthy? Okay, we almost got all the votes in. I'll give you 10 more seconds. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. So I'm going to share my results. So almost all of you said that it, it, it was unhealthy. So let's talk about that. Why would it be unhealthy to give um, your partner the silent treatment? And go ahead, you can type your answers in the chat or um, you can use the reaction button to raise your hand and we can unmute you and you can um, tell us what you think. I also think if you wanna raise your hand, you go to participants and then the up arrow and then it has a raise hand feature. I think that's how you find it. Um, okay, so it says, or this person needs more time to calm down. I learned in a training a few days ago that it normally takes six hours for a person to calm down, and for others it takes 30 hours. I was surprised when I learned that piece of information. Wow, I didn't know that those length of times too. Um, someone wrote, nothing gets solved with quietness. And another person wrote unhealthy because there is no communication on how to handle the situation. I love that. Thank you, Brenda, for mentioning that. Yep, we go back to our healthy qualities that we mentioned in the beginning. And if you're giving someone the silent treatment, you're not communicating what you need from them, right? People aren't mind readers and they can't necessarily say um, what, it, what it is that, that's going on with you. So that's important that you communicate your issues. And I just wanted to thank, um, who was it? Ada or Ida um, for mentioning that. I, I did not know that. So that's definitely something new that I learned. Um, but again, I think that goes back to when we were talking about communication of how sometimes you just need uh, to take a break, right, and not discuss it in that moment. But I wanted to just clarify the difference between, you know, taking a break from the conversation and giving the silent treatment. So when you give someone the silent treatment, how are you trying to make them feel? Like, what is the end goal of that?
I see that you can see it, Nakia, so I yep, won't read sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> so that sometimes it's okay to not talk about um, a situation right away, but you need to tell your partner that you need a while to cool down and we will visit once you have calmed down, right? So again, you're communicating to your partner, I'm not ready to talk about it, but when I am, I will let you know. So um, Natalie said that you are feeling angry and you want to give your partner silent treatment. Um, a silent treatment can make someone feel ignored, right? You're trying to make that person feel bad. You're trying to punish them. Um, now we're all adults, but when we were a child, Child, you know, a parent would not like something that we did and they would punish us for that, right? So it's important that in a relationship we go back to that equality, right? So we are on a 50-50, we're on an even um, playing field. And if someone is punishing you, then that elevates them, right? They're trying to control your actions by make, by punishing you and making you feel bad. So that's just the difference um, between the silent treatment and just taking a break from, from the conversation or just letting your partner know that you're not ready to talk yet. Very good. Okay, so let's do another one. Um, hold on, let me get you pulled too. All right, so the second one. Maria and Blake have been dating for six months. Maria tells Blake that she thinks that they should share their social media passwords. Do we think that is healthy or unhealthy? Okay. All right, I'm going to give you a few more seconds. All right, I'm going to end the polls now. I'm going to share the results. Okay, so we had 60% said that it was healthy, that Maria tells Blake that they should share their social media passwords, and 40% uh, said that it was unhealthy. So can I start with the healthy people? Can you tell me why do you think it's healthy? I'll read it one more time. It says Maria and Blake have been dating for six months. Maria tells Blake that she thinks they should share their social media passwords. Why do we think that's healthy? Okay, so um, one person says it shows trust. Okay, anyone else? Healthy because she is communicating her thoughts. Okay, very good. All right, and now I'm gonna, if you still wanna comment on healthy, you can, but now I want the people that answered unhealthy. Can you tell me why you think it is unhealthy? So the healthy side says that it shows trust and that you're communicating um, your thoughts, but why do people think that it could be unhealthy to share your social media passwords? It says it could be healthy to show that you trust a person and are open to sharing your most private life. Okay. Anybody want to respond why you think it could be unhealthy? Okay, unhealthy because it shows a form of insecurities. Okay. Good. Anyone else? It could be unhealthy because um, Maria wants the passwords because she doesn't trust. So like someone said it shows trust, but it also could be the opposite of not having trust and that's why they want the passwords. Absolutely. If they feel like they have to check in on you or monitor you, um, are they showing, the, showing you your independence and showing that they can trust you? Um, oh wait, so Sarah says that it could be unhealthy because then it could mean that you want to control what that person is doing. And says, I think the reason she wants to know the passcode determines whether it's healthy or unhealthy. I, that's, I think that's a very, very good point, um, especially if they are doing it because they don't trust you or they just want to be able to check in from time to time and monitor you, then that definitely is going to be unhealthy. And they said that people should have their privacy. Absolutely. I think that is a very important in a relationship is for people to have um, the right to privacy. Um, so overall, we are going to say that sharing social media passwords is unhealthy and that's social media passwords, that's passcodes, right? Um, even though under the guise, people can say, well, it builds trust, you know, you can have access to my phone and I can have access to your phone and that means that we both trust each other, right? Um, but if they're accessing your phone because they they want to make sure that you're doing the right thing or that you're not talking to someone or they're checking in on where you are, um, then that's going to be unhealthy because they are trying to, to control you and they're showing a lack of trust. Very good. I also think it depends on why they want the passcode, but also like how they go about it. So they should. Does Maria pressure Blake 
Does she make Blake feel bad because he doesn't want to? How does she talk about this? How does her tone of voice approach it? So there are lots of things we don't know that would help us determine this. Yes, and Sarah, you said that I don't think anyone though should tell someone you should give them your password. You should share it on your own accord. So very good. So kind of like Anne, what you were just saying that if someone is pressuring you or making you feel guilty about it, then that absolutely is going to be unhealthy and only doing it of your own free will. Very good. Okay, so we will I'm gonna stop sharing. We're gonna do one more. Okay. So Ryan calls Jose a name that Ryan does not like. Jose tells Ryan to not call him that name. Ryan stops and doesn't do it again. Is that healthy or unhealthy? What do we think? Give you a few more seconds to answer. Okay, I'm going to close the poll. All right, so the majority of you said that it was healthy. Um, now, I felt like there was little hesitation and maybe people are thinking, oh, well, what if they called Ryan a, a bad, or Ryan, what if Ryan um, was called a bad name um, or Jose was called a bad name? And that, that seems unhealthy to me, right? Um, but can someone explain to me why this is actually healthy? People are typing away. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so he was able to express how uncomfortable he felt. Very good. So he felt comfortable enough to say that he was uncomfortable, which is important, right? This is an example of setting boundaries, right? They called, he called him a name they didn't like, and he just said, you know, hey, I'm not okay with that. Please don't call me that again. And Ryan respects that boundary that he set by stopping and not doing it again. So that that is important. Um, actually, I want to do one last one and then we'll, we'll move on because I just, I just love it. So there's open communication and Ryan responded by not doing it again. Very good. Okay, so last one that we will do. Um, it says Alex gets jealous when Jordan hangs out with other people and Alex isn't invited or around. Alex says that they just want Jordan all to themselves. Is that healthy or unhealthy? I'll give you a couple more seconds to answer. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll. So you all said that it was unhealthy. Now I'm seeing a couple of red flags in this situation. Um, so if anyone wants to tell me why you think it's unhealthy, let me know and we'll, we'll talk about it briefly. Because this definitely is unhealthy. Actually, while you're doing that, I'm going to, can be a sign of being controlling, absolutely, obsessive behavior, right? Um, if they, I think Jordan needs to ask Alex why are they jealous and get to the root of the issue. Very good. Now, I, I want to um, just highlight that jealousy is a normal react, a normal emotion. We all get jealous sometimes, just like sometimes we feel happy or sad or excited, but it's what we do with that jealousy that makes it unhealthy. So if um, Alex is controlling Jordan because of that jealousy or isolating Jordan and not allowing him to hang out or not allowing him to hang out with their friends or family, then that definitely is going to be unhealthy, right? Um, because that's not allowing him to be independent. Very good. Okay, so let me share my PowerPoint one more time and we will continue. That was very good. Thank you all for your, for your wonderful insight. Resume slideshow. Okay, so 
Now let's talk about warning signs and red flags. So we covered a lot of them, um, but so a couple more red flags that we would see in relationships are controlling behavior, um, possessiveness, constantly checking in with your partner or feeling you have to constantly check in with them or they're they are monitoring you. Um, if you're walking on eggshells around your partner, um, if there's unexplained bruises, um, again, we already talked about the jealousy and isolating from friends and family. Dishonesty goes back to not being honest, right? Or breaks in communication. Now, um, red flags um, are often normalized and romanticized by our society. You know, we watch the classic movie um, where, you know, a partner, a partner gets jealous of someone and they beat him up in a bar fight or something. And we think, oh, how romantic, they care about me, they love me, right? Um, but that's actually a red flag, right? That they are controlling and maybe obsessed with you. Um, and these behaviors, um, these red flag behaviors often don't coincide with healthy behaviors we talked about. So we always, just like we've been doing in, in this training today, we always wanna go back to those healthy qualities that we talked about in the beginning. Um, an example that we can use is jealousy is unhealthy healthy is unhealthy behavior because it often um, lacks trust um, and respecting boundaries and communication. So some examples of what red flags might sound like um, is, you know, she doesn't like my friend, my family and friends, or he gets mad at me when the baby cries, or um, he keeps me pregnant, or she's jealous, right? Those are all um, things that red flags are in a relationship. Now, um, it's important to recognize that relationships fall on a spectrum from healthy to unhealthy to abusive, right? So um, it, domestic violence is fluid and it's a pattern of behaviors and not a single isolated incident. No one just wakes up in the morning and decides that they're gonna hit their partner. It's gonna be a series of these unhealthy behaviors um, that make the relationship abusive. So um, if you look at these two, these two uh, spectrums, you can say health is respect, unhealthy is disrespect, and abusive is violent. And oftentimes it's really hard for a victim to be able to recognize um, some of these red flags. So that's why we have workshops like these to help you recognize what is healthy in a relationship and what is unhealthy. So, Can I stop you for a second, Nikia? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so um, how I would like to overall define red flags, they are warning signs that the relationship could turn abusive. So when we're talking about red flags, you want, can you go back a slide real quick? Yeah. We're talking about that unhealthy, disrespectful part of that spectrum. So where the, some of those unhealthy behaviors are starting to develop. If we can identify those red flags early on, then we can address them early on and possibly that person can change their behavior behavior or the relationship could end and that's why it's important that we that we're that we look for them before that turns abusive right so just kind of placing those red flags on this continuum or spectrum absolutely and thank you for adding that on so the official definition of domestic violence um, are also known as intimate partner violence or IPC refers to a pattern of abusive behaviors in a relationship that is used by one partner to gain or maintain power and control over another partner. So a person believes that they are entitled to control another. Um, so I just, that's the two most important, important things to remember. It's just about um, power and control over another. And I also just wanna point out um, that uh, domestic violence in the eyes of the law is very limited. Um, and a lot of things that we consider that, that is domestic violence may not necessarily be um, punishable um, in the court of law. So assaulting, threatening, and stalking an intimate partner are all crimes in the state of Connecticut. However, emotional abuse that we know is very damaging to um, domestic violence victims or financial abuse may not necessarily, it's not necessarily illegal. However, um, it's still abuse. And um, even though it may not be punishable in court, uh, we still have plenty of resources that um, we, that you can access um, in, if you are suffering from that form of abuse. 
Um, so um, in conclusion, we are almost out of time, but I just want to just wanted to post this relationship assessment. It's also available on our website and Anne can um, drop a link in the chat box um, to the full assessment. Um, but I just want you in your own time in the quiet space to just take this ass assessment and kind of analyze your relationships. And um, if you're checking uh, most of the, the items in the left column, then your relationship is healthy. And if there are any, uh, if you have a couple of check marks in the right column, um, then you maybe want to give us a call and you can talk to a counselor, an advocate, um, and we can help you work through those things. Um, but it, it's just important to be aware of that. So again, here are our, here are our resources. Um, we have our hotline, we have our text line, we have our social media and our website. Um, and if you need any more information or any, any services, remember that they are free of charge and you have access to us 24 seven. So we are almost out of time, but I wanted to give um, everyone a chance to ask any questions or any comments. Um, and while you're typing that in the chat, I just wanted to let you know about some more upcoming events that we have for uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, so our next, our part two of this training will take place on Monday, October 19th um, via Zoom again at 6 p.m. And we will be talking about uh, understanding the complexities of domestic violence, right? And we're starting with the question of why don't they just leave? Um, also, I want to highlight that on October 14th, um, we are going to be doing a coffee shop outreach. So you can go into any one of these coffee shops listed below. Um, and when you purchase a hot drink, you will receive one of our, our a custom coffee sleeve of our logo, as well um, as our hotline information. And also, if you are part of a faith community, we've been doing a lot of outreach there. Um, and you may find that your um, faith leader is doing a special uh, prayer for domestic violence victims um, or for justice throughout the month of October. Um, and then lastly, we have our week of action. And I just want to highlight that on Thursday, um, October 22nd, we will have Purple Thursday, where we encourage everyone to wear purple, um, tag DVCC, also use the hashtag Purple Thursday, and it's just showing solidarity and support for um, domestic violence victims. So do we have any questions, Anne? Someone just said it was nice to be interactive, especially at this hour. Yes, thank you. Uh, we know a Monday night is six o'clock. Mondays are long, so we appreciate you being here. and We try to make it interactive. The other sessions will be just as interactive. Um, and I want to just kind of like wrap up by like, I want our takeaways to be that everyone deserves to be in a healthy relationship, one where they feel safe, respected, right, and happy. We all deserve that. Um, and why we wanted to start with talking about healthy relationships is because that's prevention. Talking about what do we all deserve? Um, we don't just want to talk about the bad and domestic violence. We really need to have conversations about what healthy relationships look like so that we understand what they are and we can engage in healthy behaviors. Um, someone wrote, I have a question regarding support for financial abuse. I have some clients that are currently struggling, struggling in this area. Um, so um, that would be to connect someone with our financial and housing advocacy program. Kim Donovan is our program manager. Um, and so you can go on our website and contact us and say that you need housing and financial advocacy and Kim um, and call us up and tell us that and we'll um, connect you because yes, many victims struggle uh, with financial abuse is one of the major hurdles uh, for leaving an abusive relationship. We'll talk more about that next week. Um, and then someone wrote, I also work with DV clients. This Zoom was a very positive. Great. Sounds good, Ida, Ada. Um, and we Natalie. need to find out. Yeah, and thank you for the work that you do, Natalie, for working with DV clients. It, it can definitely be a tough job, but it, it's a noble one. So. We need to find housing, which is the biggest barrier. Absolutely. That is a huge, huge barrier. Yes. And again, like Anne said, we will definitely are going to talk more in our next session on October 19th of some of the barriers um, that that keep DV victims um, in these relationships. So I appreciate you bringing that up. And I'm sure that you're going to be an expert um, in our part two series uh, when we discuss it. 
Very nice. So any other questions before we wrap up? It's 6.46 and I definitely want to be respectful of everyone's time. Oh, thanks, Natalie. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so if there is nothing else, then um, we hope to see you all. Oh, thank you. Um, I, we hope to see you all on um, Monday, October 19th. And please invite your friends, your family, your colleagues. You still have time to sign up for um, part two and part three of the series. Just because they missed part one does not mean that they can't jump in um, and still get the information that they need. So please share the link with, um, with everyone you know. And we would love to see um, you all again next week, or not next week, but October 19th. Um, all right. So good night, everyone. Thank you again Bye, for joining us. Thank you. Us.